Hi, welcome back to Faith Groups. This is the final session of Faith Groups for the Advent and Christmas 2022-2023 season. So I feel like it's the end of an era. Um, I really do. This has been so life-giving for me and so fun for me to, to do these faith groups with you, and I hope it's been beneficial to you too. Um, so today is the solemnity of the Epiphany of our Lord. This is one of my favorite, favorite holy days. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. I just, I, I love what it's about. I love that cultures the world over celebrate the epiphany of Jesus to people who were not the Jews um, with so many different traditions and things. I, I love chalking my door. I love the readings. I just, I just love epiphany. So we had faith group, or we had faith groups. We had faith formation this morning. Um, and I, I really went overboard with talking about how much I love epiphany, but I really do. Um, so yeah, this is the, the last session of faith groups. Um, I'm assuming that we will do this again during during Lent. Um, hopefully it'll be a, a team effort between Father Ricardo and myself. So we'll we'll see. We'll talk about that and we'll get going. But but epiphany. Um, so epiphany is a Greek word. Um, it means like a sudden understanding um, or revelation of divinity more specifically. So a, a sudden understanding, usually triggered by something quite simple. If you've ever had like a light bulb moment, that's an epiphany. Um, if something ever just clicked for you for seemingly no reason, that, that's an epiphany. And we've taken that word and we've moved it to, to now it means specifically the manifestation or the revelation of Jesus to the Gentile people. Um, and that's that's what happened when the Gentiles visited Jesus. When the Magi visited Jesus, they had a sudden understanding of divinity with something so simple, this baby in a simple, humble, poor manger. Um, they were the, the Magi were the first visitors of Jesus at his home. And so that's why this weekend at the parish, we gave out blessed chalk so you can go bless uh, your own homes and your own your own families. Um, you're going to have to Google that. If, if you don't know it off the top of your head, go, go Google it. Um, we have blessed chalk coming out of our ears. So come get some if you didn't get some. Um, we don't know how long after Jesus's birth, the Magi visited the Holy Family. Um, Matthew is the only gospel in which this instant this activity appears and he doesn't tell us he just says sometime after jesus's birth um so the nice picture you have in your head of the three kings coming um to to the creation is not entirely accurate um it could have been relatively quickly after he was born um it also could have been up to two years after jesus was born and we know that because when herod figures out um, when the star appeared, you know, he, he gets all this information from the Magi before they know he's kind of a bad guy. He commands that male children up to the age of two be killed. And so that tells us that Jesus was under the age of two. So he could have been up to two years. He could have been two years old. Um, that's kind of my thinking is that he was probably around, around two um, we don't, we don't know exactly when the Magi visited and the Magi, excuse me, my notes, um, the Magi were distinguished foreigners. Okay. The distinguished part is where we kind of get this idea of them as Kings. They were distinguished foreigners. They're said, um, to have borne gifts of gold, <clears throat> pardon me, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And all we know where they come from is they come from the East. They come from where the sun rises to worship the king of the Jews. Um, we sometimes call them kings because we kind of identify them with Isaiah prophecy and with prophecy from the Psalms. Um, Isaiah 60 refers to kings coming to the brightness of your dawn. Makes sense. Um, it also Isaiah also mentions that they'll bear gold and frankincense. All right. And Psalm 72, 11 reads, may all kings fall down before him. So that's kind of where we get this identification with the Magi as kings. Um, 
but they're they're referred to as wise men also. That's that's a little more accurate. So magi is, um, it's a plural, and it's borrowed from the Greek magos. And that itself is derived from um, a language called Avesten. It's like an ancient Persian language. Um, I will put in the discussion guide how to spell that because you don't want me to try and pronounce it. It's got accents and things I don't. I don't know, but uh, magi is derived from this word. And that term itself refers to a priestly caste of a religion called Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrians are the original monotheists. We often think of the Jews as the oldest monotheistic religion, and that's not quite accurate. Zoroastrianism is actually far more ancient. And I actually thought that this was a dead ancient religion until I went to college and met one. So, um, it is fascinating. So I, I'm i on team, the Magi were Persian Zoroastrians. Um, and as part of their religion, these, peace, these priests paid particular attention to the stars. And so they gained an international reputation for being very good astrologers, not astronomers. Astrology was considered science in the ancient world. And that's what these, these men were. Uh, the only information we have from Matthew is that they come from the East, right? Um, the, the Persian empire was very tolerant of other religions, lending credence to um, them looking for the newborn king of the Jews and being open to visiting and bringing him gifts. Um, but its dominant religion was Zoroastrianism. And um, if you've looked up the blessing by now, you know that the, the formula for the chalking is the first part of the year, uh, 20 plus CMB plus 23. So the year 2023 and the traditional initials, the traditional first initials um, of the Magi, which we say are Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. In reality, we have no idea what their names were, but that's what we call them. Um, and tradition has identified Balthazar with Arabia Melchior with Persia and Casper of India. And we we do that because this epiphany is a revelation of Jesus to the whole world, right? The whole Gentile world. And so by identifying the Magi with three different geographical regions, it's saying Jesus is for everyone. Um, and all three of their gifts, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, those are all... Um, ordinarily offerings given to uh, a king. So they, they, they know what's going on. Wise men, right? They know what's going on. Um, myrrh is commonly used as an anointing oil. Um, frankincense is a perfume and it symbolizes divinity. It was used in worship. Um, the, I forget which king, but we have record of a king of Syria offering frankincense to Apollo. So by giving this child frankincense, the wise men are acknowledging his connection to the divine. And then gold is very valuable. Um, gold is a sing symbol of kingship, frankincense, again, divinity, and myrrh was um, a symbol of death. It was the oil used to anoint and embalm bodies. And it was also a common folk remedy for um, intestinal worms in infants. We don't have to deal with that here and now. Um, but in the ancient world, that would have been a very practical gift. Uh, so if you have listened to Father Joe's homily for the weekend, if you haven't, please go look up the live stream. It's a wonderful homily. He says that now that Christmas is over, the work of Christmas begins. And I really love that because ordinary time is the time when we identify it with Jesus's public ministry, right? We identify it with Jesus teaching us. And when Jesus taught us, he was also healing and loving people and helping people. And so when we're being taught by Jesus, like, let's go also do the work that he taught us how to do. Let's go heal each other. Let's go love each other. Let's feed the hungry, visit the imprisoned, shelter the poor, um, things like that. And we do that by seeing God in other people. The, the Imago Dei, the image of God is in every, every single one of us. Um, like the Magi, we can bless each other with our gifts. And by blessing each other with our gifts, we're blessing God with our gifts. By giving to other people, we're giving back to God. 
um, because nothing we have is our own, right? It's all been gifted to us. And so we're, we're just stewards of what we've been given. Um, I mentioned this in the newsletter a little bit. I never thought about this, but I read it in a, in a Jesuit commentary that it's very possible that Joseph sold the gold and frankincense in order to finance the Holy Family's flight into Egypt, their travel into Egypt. Um, and so the point of that is God provides to us through others. He doesn't always, you know, just, just, you know, give us what we need on a silver platter. We're going to find things through others. It's like that old joke about, um, a, a man needing rescue, um, in a hurricane, he's on his roof, you know, a helicopter comes by and he says, God will take care of me. And then at the end of his life, this man asks God why he didn't rescue him. And God says, I sent you a helicopter. What else do you want? You know, so, so God provides to us through other people. Similarly, God provides through other people through us. So listen to those promptings and, and serve each other. The first reading today predicts the Magi's visit. It says the wealth of nations shall be brought to you, gold and frankincense. Um, the psalm, every nation on earth will adore you. Um, again, the Magi were all Persians or Austrian priests, but we identify them with different cultures and different regions because God is for all, right? And the second reading reminds us of the theme of the Magi's visit. Paul writes that the Gentiles are co-heirs members of the same body, co-partners in the promise of Jesus through the gospel. So from his very beginning, Jesus was for all people. I think it's easy to forget that from the very beginning, Jesus's mission was the same. You know, he didn't change his mind. He didn't add the Gentiles in at a later date. Um, he was always for all people. I'm, I'm running out of time on my recording, so I just want to close with... Um, something from an essay written by Father James Martin um, from his, his weekly outreach um, Sunday reflection. Um, let's see, where should I start? The good news, that is the incredible news, that God became human, embarked on a public ministry of preaching and healing, and suffered, died, and rose again, is for everyone. It is not a secret bit of knowledge meant for a few. It is for the whole world. More importantly, Jesus is for everyone. One of my favorite quotes from the late Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI is this beautiful line. The happiness you are seeking, the happiness you have a right to enjoy, has a name and a face. It is Jesus of Nazareth. It is not simply that a piece of encouraging news has come for all people. It is that a person, Jesus Christ, has come for all people. He has come for the poor, like Mary and Joseph, for your family, like Elizabeth, for those on the margins, like the shepherds, and for people from the farthest reaches of the world, like the Magi. And more specifically, he has come for you. Just keep looking for the manifestations of his presence in your life. He will be there in all his color, glory, and joy. Um, so as we close today, um, just, just remember that Jesus from the very beginning has been for all people. Jesus from the very beginning has been for you uh, joyfully um, and humbly. And if we're going to be Christians, if we're going to be Christ followers, then that is the model that we follow, right? Jesus is for all people. Um, so we need to be for all people. Jesus is in all people. So we need to see Jesus in all people. Um, so that's my challenge to you as we enter ordinary time, as we enter the, the teaching ministry of Jesus, um, try to see, try to see him everywhere. Um, keep, keep reading your Bibles. If you kept up with the five minutes a day challenge, um, great. Maybe extend it to 10. Uh, if you have it, then, you know, maybe, maybe pick it up again, um, the, the Bible is where we find the word of God. It's where we find Jesus. If we're going to know Jesus, then we need to know, like, that's that's the best way to find him is in his word and what he said. Um, I have 15 seconds left on my recording. Stop by and say hi. Um, thanks for going on this journey with me. I've really enjoyed it with all of you. Um, happy Epiphany and God bless all of you. Bye.